Hello there again everybody, Brandon here coming to you from uh, what is actually the new house that my family and I moved into. So it's been a little bit of a uh, hiatus for me here from the channel, a couple of months getting settled in. Um, so you can see some of my art here is being used in the new house. Seasonal decor is what we're going with here. So um, right now I've got some spring and summertime pieces coming in, which is the subject of this particular video. I just did a request here for a swimming sea turtle. So if you want to have a look at this painting and paint along with this one, let's do it now. So what I have here is a 6x8 canvas, a little smaller canvas project this time. This is a store-bought canvas. Um, I have my pencil sketch in here of the sea turtle that I'm going to be painting. Just kind of a rough outline of what I'm going to be doing. And I'm just going to show you some of the brushes I'm using here. This is a so this is a 1-inch flat brush. This is a Princeton Select here. I'm going to be using it for the background just to put in kind of a water scene here. I also have a 3-quarter inch wash brush. Uh, might not use it on this project, but you've seen this brush a lot. This was just a brush brought from a uh, Hobby Lobby that's kind of worn out. I um, also have a half inch angled brush that I'm going to be using here probably for a lot of the turtle work itself. And then a couple of smaller brushes here. I have a liner brush, I have a small 1 8 inch angled brush, and then I have a little 10 aught spotter brush here that I'm going to be using probably for some of the details but I'm going to start here with this wash brush one inch here I'm going into mostly phthalo blue and a lot of white tiny little touch of green and I'm going to just start working this color in here for the background I'm going to start in the top corner and just kind of pull this color down what I'm looking for here is an effect of an underwater scene here with maybe a light source coming in from the top um, you know the sun's out there or whatever so if I have any streaks or lines here in my brush strokes I want them to be uh, given the illusion that it is maybe some sun rays that's coming down through the water here so I'm gonna vary up my colors just a little bit here adding a little more blue in some places and more white in some other places and then while this is wet I will come back and kind of blend it all in um, but what you're looking for here is just a, a non-monotone, bluish, greenish, whatever color you want your water to be, background. And so I'm just going to again fade in here while this paint's wet. And here's a little bit more blue I'm bringing in from the bottom to darken things up just a little bit. Maybe right underneath this sea turtle here, it'll be a little bit darker. Maybe he's throwing a little bit of a shadow in the water itself. So, and just keep your brush strokes here in pretty much the same direction. Um, so, we can come back here and pull these lines down, blend these, fade these a little bit, but give the illusion that we maybe have some sun rays here peeking through this water and ultimately you can make this water color whatever you want it to be I'm just kind of using again mostly white and phthalo blue and just a hint of green here and there I'm not so worried about my turtle outline up there. It's you know just giving me a rough idea of where my turtle is going to be and how he's going to be on my canvas. But I'm not so concerned about covering up the edges, obviously, because we're going to come back and paint him in on top of this. So.
and if your lines aren't, you know, perfectly, uh, I don't know if parallel is the word I want to use, but if we're trying to do some sun rays here and you're trying to get your brush strokes in a roughly the same direction, as long as you come back in here and keep working with it before your paint dries, everything will be okay. You can just pull your brush strokes in the same direction. A little bit more here on the back end and the background will be just about finished. Once you get your initial layer in here, of course, if you want to darken things up in some areas, just add a little bit more of the blue or the green, or if you want to lighten things up, add a little bit more white into your mix until you're happy with the end result. I'm not going to get too carried away with this background here. Again, we're just going for a basic underwater background here. The sea turtle himself, obviously, is the main attraction, so I'm not going to spend too much time here on this background. I think that's looking pretty good. We've got our brush strokes relatively in the same direction. Now I lost a little bit of my battery power here on the camera and I just noted it. All I've done here, I've come in here with my half inch angled brush and I've gone into a mix of sap green, a touch of raw umber, a little bit of black to darken things up and I am tapping and dotting in just different textures of this color, a little bit of variety of this color in terms of some of it's a little bit darker, some of it's a little bit lighter, so more green in my mix in the lighter areas, more of the black and a little bit of raw umber in my mix for some of the darker areas. And I'm just, you know, randomly hitting these uh, edges of where his shell is going to be, the back of his feet here, or legs. Um, and I'm just trying to vary this uh, color here. Again, not a monotone looking thing, so I'm going to have darker areas, lighter areas. It doesn't have to be anything specific here. So we're going to come back and detail it all out. So right now I'm just kind of twisting, turning this brush, tapping it in here to create a variety of effects and textures in this. A little bit more green in the mix here towards the top of his shell where the sunlight's going to be hitting it. I want a little bit lighter towards the top. Ultimately, we're going to highlight in the very top edge with the brightest highlights along the top of his shell anyway. I'm trying to kind of define out where some of these hard edges are on his shell. And when you're doing this, just, you know, don't get too caught up in making everything look perfect on this pass. We're just trying to get some color in. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre here into my mix now. Come along the front of this uh, front leg flipper, whatever you call these things on these turtles, I don't know. We're going to ultimately end up with some of this yellowish tan color here on him. I'm going to lighten this mix up and gray it out a little bit. A lot of white here, just a touch of raw umber in it. To go onto this back leg here, I want to just basically desaturate my color a little bit. This leg is a little, little further away. I want to give the impression that it's on the other side of his body here. So knock my color intensity down a little bit. And I'm just going to keep working this color in. He's got a little bit around his face here. Maybe the top of the head. Ultimately, we'll switch brushes here to detail out, obviously, the face area. Right now, it's just about getting some color in. I want to 
create a little bit of a shadow here underneath his body. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of blue into my mix, a little bit of raw umber, and start creating some shading here. And just kind of keep adding more blue, more raw umber to gray it out. While I'm working with this color, I'm going to bring it in here along the shell, along the back. Again, don't get too carried away with, you know, having anything in any particular order here. Just kind of randomly drop it in, whatever, wherever your brush lands here. Just kind of keep your fingers moving, keep the brush moving, tap it. Don't think about it too much, just kind of do it. Go back to my shading here along the belly, I guess. Again, I'm just adding in more gray mix here. So raw umber, a little bit of blue. I'm just kind of mixing these colors on the brush. Just so I get a variety on the canvas here. Add a little bit more raw umber now to my mix here tap in some things here along the base of the shell here with this arms coming out. A little bit of random things up in here. And again you just have to not worry about perfection on this first pass. I'm gonna switch brushes here to my smaller angle to brush darken some things up and start texturing out this face a little bit. Got raw umber here into my mix. I'm just kind of creating some of these darker lines around the face. We're going to add some of these wrinkly looking things along his skin here around the neck. So I'm just going to bring in this darker color and touch it in. And maybe a few random ones down in here. All these sea turtles look different, obviously, but they have kind of a similar look to them. So we're just going to come in here and drop in a bunch of random little dark places. Maybe define out the back of where this leg is here with this browner color. And then randomly drop in some more along the shell. Just wherever you think you want a variety of color. Alright, I'm going to lighten things up here. A little bit of my yellow ochre touch of titanium white and we're gonna go back in here now and start touching in where lights reflecting off of some of these areas and creating some variety of lights and darks I'm just making things interesting the front corner of this little shoulder in here is gonna end up being uh, catching some light so I need to define out where it's gonna be And right in front of the shoulder here, we're going to darken things up. This is going to be his most shadowed part of his belly in here. And you have to just kind of keep working with your colors until you get things looking the way you want. If it doesn't look right when you first put it down there, you just keep changing it. I'm trying to create separation here between where the top of this arm here is and then the rest of his belly and while I've got this lighter color we need to maybe finish filling in this face and we'll come back in and add our details I have a bad habit of just kind of hopping around from one thing to another might not be the most efficient method, but 
I just kind of keep going with what I've got on my brush. I'm lightening things up a little bit here for the underneath section of his face, chin, whatever you call this area. Finish filling in this face with color. I don't clean my brush very often, um, so what colors I've got on it, and I keep adding things to it and going back and forth, and so I just keep working in areas where I feel like that color that I've got on the end of my brush at the moment needs to go. So now that I've got this lighter color I was working with, I'm going to bring it down here to make this look a little more uniform, <clears throat> and then I'll have to come back in and darken things up and shade things where I want to be but right now since I have this lighter color on here I know this front corner here needs to be light All right, I've zoomed in here where we can do a little bit of face detail I'm gonna be using my spotter brush here I'm gonna to try to define out this eye a little bit better this is mostly some raw umber a touch of white in here tiny little bit of blue to kind of gray this out Their eyes look kind of a grayish blue. And while I've got this color here, I'm just gonna try to define out maybe the nose, the mouth, underneath the chin here, a little darker. Got a little bit more raw umber here into my mix to darken underneath this where his mouth kind of overhangs. Got a little bit of light catching on the top edge here, so add a little bit of white to this mix here right on the tip of his nose and his ridge over the mouth and I'm just gonna kind of scrub some more of this color in here and fill in the rest of this face where I still see a little bit of the canvas shining through <clears throat> he's got a little green going on here maybe on the top of the head so I'm gonna just dip my brush in a little of that and drop in a little bit of green I feel like I need to gray out this eye a little bit more, define it out to this top edge. And if you look at a reference photo of a sea turtle, You'll see they have these funny little splotches and lines going everywhere, so you don't have to be real specific with these things, just kind of drop them in. And just kind of keep working with your details until you get something that makes you uh, content with the finished product here. This eye is still... I need to maybe stick a dark spot in there. Give me a little bit of a pupil. And then when you kind of step back from it, it'll look the way you want it to look. Right now I'm still zoomed in here, so this probably looks kind of weird, but they have these funny little wrinkles everywhere in their skin, so I'm just kind of working this gray color that I had around the eye along the base of the chin here it's kind of a shaded underneath 
so I'm going with a more gray along the bottom and then brighten things up here as I move up the face to where the brighter highlights here along the top so I've got a little bit more white in my mix here for the tips of the nose, top of that jawline, top of the head and then just random places here along the side of his face where light's catching a little bit to just keep the top part brighter and then underneath darker will create the contrast we want and the highlight and the shade that we want to give us the illusion that this is indeed a turtle out here swimming in the water use your brightest highlights along the top edges somewhere around these tops of his head here to define that edge out a little bit better. He's starting to take a little shape there anyway. And you can keep messing with these things forever it seems like if you don't just stop at some point but just keep varying your color here keeping your brightest stuff on the top darker stuff underneath touching in a little bit more of this darker color here along this edge again they have like these wrinkly appearance so you just kind of keep drawing these lines of dark and light back and forth to create that illusion. Maybe go back into a little bit more raw umber here and darken things up a bit. Just randomly tap and draw this stuff in. I don't really love the way that eye is looking. I need to round that out a little bit to find his eyeball a little bit better. So their eyes are kind of this grayish blue color. So gray things out. Add a tad, tad bit of blue back in it. All right. Zoom back out here now. I'm pretty happy with his face, to be honest with you. I'm not going to get too carried away there. Now that I've got this gray blue color I just did the eye with, I'm going to bring it back down here for my shading underneath. Between where his two front legs are coming out, I want to kind of make the illusion that it's the darkest area, the most shaded. got a lot of brown in here a lot of blue a lot of gray color just back and forth with darker tones lighter tones and darken things up a bit more here and I end up making a lot of passes on this so again don't get too upset if you put a color in here that you don't love the way it looks because you can always come out here and add more stuff so right now I'm gonna drop in some of this raw umber and I'm in, probably gonna come back in with some more blue here and gray this out some more uh, when it's all said and done the more variety of color you add in here though the more interesting it looks on the finished product so I'm just gonna keep scrubbing this a little bit more raw umber mix in here on the back of this leg. Draw a bunch of random little shapes and squigglies in here. Each time I'm going back to my 
essentially what is my palette here. I'm just adding different colors to this brush. I'm going to go into some green now. Drop a few little places of that in. Back into more raw umber. Get some more darker things going on here on the inside of this leg. Too dark. Let's lighten that up a little bit. And this is all pretty random again. I'm not doing anything specific here. Bring a little bit more white into my mix and draw some random lines in here of some lighter stuff. Put a little touch of brighter highlight on that front corner of that leg where it's catching some light. The leading edge of this outer leg here I'll have a little bit more highlight to it just randomly tap some stuff in or some lights catching it and again while I've got that brighter color on my brush I'll tap in a few highlights here along the leading edge of his neck where some lights catching it and again I'm kind of random here while I have this lighter color on the brush I'm just gonna drop it in in some other places where I think it needs it a little bit lighter here we end up putting in some lighter highlights here along the top of this shell. And since I don't really wash my brush out a whole lot, like I said, I just kind of keep working with what colors I've got on it. So while I have a color, I'll just put it in any other place where I feel like it needs to be. I'm going to go back into just a tiny bit more of this blue into my brown shaded mix here. Work on this color here underneath the neck and down to the belly again. Because ultimately this is going to be a, a shaded area. start bringing that color in over here on this front flipper as well I think the leading edge of this is gonna have a little bit more brighter highlight to it there's a lot of just random little squigglies that go on these legs here. We're going to end up drawing some lighter little random lines in it and then putting some darker things in. The front corner here is still going to be the brightest. Add a little bit more white into that. And now try to maybe define out some of these areas where you can see lighter lines that come through all this dark stuff on these legs. They kind of have big scaly looking things going on here. So I'm just going to draw some of that in.
may end up needing a liner brush to do some of this I don't know we're gonna keep using this spotter brush here for right now whatever you've got that you can kind of come in here with small lines just draw some random little lines here kind of defining out some some things I don't know what like I said all of these are they kind of look like scales I don't know what these things are can't say that I'm up on my sea turtle terminology in terms of what they have going on here but I'm just trying to emulate basically what it looks like so lots of little brighter lines in here cutting through that dark stuff I'm mostly using yellow ochre here with a white. Now we can come back in with our sap green touch of black and maybe redefine some of this dark stuff. It comes around up to the front edge of this leg here so darken some places up randomly splotch them back in that's why I said this is kind of a layering process of back and forth between darks and lights and the more you go back and forth with this stuff it just on the finished product has a lot of things going on that make it look good in the end I'm going to essentially do the same thing on this back leg here. I'm going to bring that lighter color back in and draw some random little things. And then we can again always come back in with darker stuff to re-emphasize what we want. While I've got this color on the brush, I'm going to bring it down here along the bottom of this shell because again I want that bottom part to be a little bit more shaded. And just drag this color in any other place where I feel like I want some separation, some definition between dark and light. Maybe need to find out the front edge of this shell a little bit better. I'm going to go back into some green here kind of draw in these areas that create some definition on these places on his shell here. Ultimately the top end of this shell is going to be catching some of the light so I'm going to add a little bit of highlight to the top edge and we can also define out some individual ridges here again by going back and forth with lighter colors and darker colors. There's different plates going on on his shell here that we want to define out. So I'm just going to drag some of this lighter color across here to give an indication that there's something going on on his shell. Add a little bit more titanium white to that now to drop in more highlights. Keep working on this back leg here. Putting in our little squiggly lines.
And again, I wanted to find out some of these different little areas on his shell here. Darken in a few places. And try to create the illusion that there's different sections of these plates on this shell back here. If you just kind of let this happen here and don't think about it too much, I seem to get better end results than if I concentrate and really try to make something specific. It doesn't seem to work out for me, but if I just kind of randomly put this in, I end up liking the end result a little bit better. Now I'm going to go back into my brighter highlights here and try to finish to finding out some of these edges of this shell here. These are some ridges that go along that we can define out. Anywhere where you want to create separation. And just keep working your darker colors and your lighter colors next to each other. I feel like he's got a little bit of a shadow here underneath the edge of that shell where that leg comes out. So I'm just darken that ridge just a little. Brighten up the top edges of this a little bit. And wherever we want to make the illusion again that there's little sections of, of the shell here. Just bring that lighter color in. And just kind of draw out some places where the light is catching some of that. And then our brightest highlight again for the top edge. So I'm adding a lot more white to my mix here draw it along the top of the back and in all honesty at this point I'm fairly pleased with that I think I might actually just call that done you can see this just kind of uh, random things going on in there but you step back from it and zoom out a little bit here it's got us a pretty good little sea turtle hanging out there in the water so i'm going to call that one finished hope you guys have something that you're happy with there until next time happy painting everybody <laughs>